Governor Chris Christie, welcome to the Reagan Library. It's great to be back. Well, thank you for being here and spending the time. Real short, in, in 60 seconds or less, what does Ronald Reagan mean to you? He was my first vote. I turned 18 in September of 1980 in my freshman year of college, and the country was pretty hopeless then. Double-digit inflation, double-digit interest rates, double-digit unemployment, and I'm a new college student thinking, what's my future gonna be? And I sat in that dorm room in October of 1980 and voted for Ronald Reagan because he gave me hope. And I think that the thing that the president means more than anything to me is that he's someone who understood how to get things done and he understood how to inspire the American people to be better, not to be worse. And uh, boy, could we use him now. President Reagan faced down an authoritarian regime that sought to change our way of life. He tackled a faltering economy and a sense among some that our best days were behind us. What lessons from President Reagan's presidency do you see as most relevant to the challenges of today? Well, I think first is his resolve. Um, when he decided that he wanted to try to change something, no matter how many other people were in his ear to tell him he was wrong, he kept his course. Um, second, he was someone who knew how to work with other people, uh, make them feel comfortable, make them feel like they could be a part of a solution. And then third, I think, when you look at those accomplishments you just laid out, um, he was someone that not only inspired our country, but he inspired the whole world. The whole world joined the fight against the Soviet Empire when Ronald Reagan called him the evil empire, when Ronald Reagan set the course for how we were going to do it, when Ronald Reagan said, tear down the Berlin Wall. The rest of the world followed. Um, that's when America is at its best, and we were at our best during Ronald Reagan's eight years as president. Well, following up on that and picking up on the concept of inspiration, President Reagan often spoke about America as a shiny, shining city upon a hill. Is America today still that shining city? And what would you do as president to keep that city shining, not only in the eyes of Americans, but in the eyes of the world? Well, it is still a shining city on the hill, but the light is dimming. And the light's dimmed by division and pessimism and leaders who are more self-consumed than they are worried about serving the people who elected them. And so what we need to do is return to the servant politician, the kind of person who understands that their first job is not to serve themselves, but to serve the people they got elected by. And for the world, America has always been at its greatest when it's taken on the big challenges. And the big challenges around the world, I spoke recently to the ambassador from Japan, and I said if the prime minister could ask me as the new president about one thing, that he'd want America to do to make Japan a better place, he said lead. And President Reagan understood that. He understood that when America leads, the rest of the world follows and the ones that don't have to stand up against our example. And we're not doing that right now, unfortunately, but it can be changed. We're actually coming up upon the 40th anniversary of President Reagan visiting with uh, Prime Minister Nakasone of Japan and being the first U.S. president to speak to the Japanese diet. So it's a, it's a, it's a very timely example. Uh, of, of all the topics that are going to come up on the Reagan Library debate stage tonight, what key issue do you want to make sure that people hear from you about? Is there one issue that, that you want to make sure people hear from you about? Yeah, I want people to understand that America has to be a leader in the world that it's not optional. Because to leave a vacuum in leadership in the world means that our adversaries in China will fill it. And we don't want a world that's led by an authoritarian communist dictatorship that abuses its own people, tells them how many children they can have, tells them what they can listen to and speak to. We want a world that has freedom and liberty and opportunity. And the only way to do that is to make sure we engage in the world. And whether that's on the battlefield in Ukraine, helping the Ukrainians to defeat the, the Russian authoritarian regime, or whether it's standing up for the Taiwanese to make sure that China knows that's not a step they want to take. The rest of the world is watching what America will do and what we won't do. And I want them to know tonight a Christie presidency will be a presidency where America leads not just our country, but the world. Last question, Governor, and let's pick up on that, on the substance of your last answer. There are many candidates in this race. Why should Republican primary voters vote for you? You know, what Ronald Reagan gave as an example to us 44 years ago was he beat a Democratic incumbent. It has not been done since Ronald Reagan did it. I'm the only person on that stage who's ever beaten a Democratic incumbent. I beat John Corzine in New Jersey in one of the bluest states in this country. Before we can do any of the things that we talk about, we have to win. 
And I'm the person on the stage that has shown that I can attract independent voters, that I can attract strong Republicans, and I can even attract some Democrats. And that's what we need to do, just what he did, to go from a 40-state win his first time to a 49-state win his second time. That's the kind of coalition I can build for the Republican Party in his image. And that's why I'm so happy to be here tonight to make that case at his library. Governor Chris Christie, thank you for your time. You're welcome back anytime at the Reagan Library. We really appreciate it. Thank you.